Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody that's logged on by web or by phone. Uh, thank you for attending our Sykes Street North Public Information Center that is going to be done virtually this afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Collier and I am the manager of the environmental services and I'll be the project manager for this uh, specific project which is slated to start later on in the summer. Uh, I'll indicate that this uh, public information center will include a short presentation by CC Tatham and it will be followed by any questions or comments uh, after the presentation. So if you can hold off with uh, any comments or questions till the end of the presentation. Uh, we'll address those uh, at that time. Uh, I'd like to turn things over to Alan from Tatham's and we'll get uh, the presentation started. Thank you for the introduction, Chris, and good evening, everyone. Sorry, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Alan Brownridge and joining me is our lead designer, Aaron Roper. We represent Tatham Engineering, uh, who has been engaged to complete the detailed design of Sykes Street. Um, and we'd like to take the, this time to thank everyone who's joined us virtually today. We recognize the setup is a little different than the typical um, in-person public information meetings. However, we will do our best to provide you with the necessary information. Before we get started with the presentation, we'd like to walk you through um, this virtual setup. Uh, first note that this session will be recorded. Uh, the municipality will be posting it on their website for residents who are unable to attend today or for anyone who would like to, um, uh, you know, rewatch it and uh, uh, have any further consideration. Uh, we, we ask that all participants remain muted unless specifically asked otherwise. And uh, following the presentation, we will take time to address comments from the public. If you have comments or questions, there are various ways that you may present it. Um, the first option is to simply uh, add your question into the conversation box. Uh, for those who uh, may not be familiar with Teams, you should have a kind of a taskbar in the middle of your screen. Um, there's a, a little hand and there's, a, there's right beside the hand is a little a text box. So if you click on that, you should be able to get into the comment section. So feel free to add comments uh, into that uh, throughout the presentation, and then we will we will review those uh, at the end. Uh, if you're uncomfortable typing in your conversation, you'd rather do it verbally. Uh, just indicate within that comment box that you have a, a question or a comment, and uh, at the appropriate time, we will ask you to. Um, unmute your microphone and ask your question or comment. Uh, for those joining us uh, via telephone today, we will provide a separate opportunity for you to um, ask questions. And, and finally, contact information will be, pro will be provided uh, at the end of the presentation, so residents can email or, or call us to provide uh, any further uh, comments that they have. Uh, and comments will be uh, accepted until January 22nd. With that, we'll get started with the presentation. I'm just going to share my screen and bring that up. OK, that should be working. Mm -hmm. I'm getting the thumbs up. That's great. So the objective today is to provide an overview of the Sykes Street reconstruction project and engage the public in a discussion on various aspects to ensure that questions and comments are addressed and incorporated within the final design. We will explain our role in the project uh, team, provide some background, describe the proposed scope of work, discuss the impacts of construction, and review the proposed schedule before opening the floor for questions and comments. For those who may not be familiar with Tatham Engineering, uh, we are a local employee-owned professional consulting engineering firm with about 130 employees. Our head office is located in Collingwood, while we have uh, four branch offices located in Bracebridge, Barrie, Aurelia, and Ottawa. Um, Tatham Engineering was awarded this project through the Municipality of Meaford's competitive request for proposal process. Our responsibilities for this project include the detailed design, tendering support, uh, and we will also be providing construction inspection and contract administration throughout. Um, the construction process to ensure the project is completed to the appropriate standard. Uh, our role ensures, ensures that all technical issues encountered through construction are addressed 
in an appropriate and effective manner, uh, resulting in a project that is delivered both on time and on budget. Uh, the project team. Uh, so as I explained, I'm the uh, I'm the old guy with with no hair. I have uh, over 17 years of experience in uh, municipal reconstruction projects uh, throughout uh, Simcoe and Gray County, including Blue Mountains, Collingwood, Midland, North Bay, Owen Sound, and several other places. Um, Aaron Roper is uh, my right hand man on this project. He's the uh, lead designer and uh, one might say the brains of the operation. Um, uh, he's been involved of uh, involved with several uh, of the uh, the recent projects that we've uh, successfully completed. So this pro uh, this slide illustrates the project limits, which, in which includes Sykes Street from Lombard Street to Collingwood Street, a total length of approximately 250 meters. Of course, Sykes Street is the is a connecting link portion of Highway 26. And the subject area is located immediately north of the downtown core. Next, we'll talk about the project background. The primary objective of this project is to replace substandard and aged below ground infrastructure, improve road drainage, replace deteriorated road, curb and sidewalks, and improve public safety. Municipal records indicate the sanitary sewer and water main within the limits of the project are over 110 years old, while the storm sewer system is at least 50 years old. The age infrastructure requires regular maintenance and frequent costly emergency repairs. The deteriorating sewers allow groundwater infiltration into the pipes, which reduce capacity of the sewer system and at the wastewater treatment plant, while cracks also allow sewage to seep out into the soils around the sewer pipes. The municipality successfully obtained funding under the Provincial Connection Connecting Links program. The funding will cover up to 90% of the eligible costs for highway infrastructure improvements, including storm sewer upgrades and road reconstruction. While the funding does not cover any upgrades to the sanitary sewer or water main infrastructure, it does allow the municipality to replace this infrastructure within the project area in a cost effective manner. And one of the requirements of the funding is uh, for the municipality to construct the works uh, prior to the end of the year 2021. Next, we'll talk about the project scope. The project scope includes the replacement of sanitary sewer, storm sewer, and water main throughout, the replacement of sanitary and water uh, services to the property line only, the installation of new storm services, which we'll speak to later. Full road reconstruction, including new concrete curb and gutter. Replacement of sidewalks. Enhanced pedestrian crossing at Parker Street. Restoration of boulevards and driveways to previous or better conditions. And we also wanted to note that the utility poles and street lights are, um, will remain in their current location. Please note Enbridge Gas has also advised that they will be replacing the gas main throughout the limits of this project. Um, this work is scheduled to commence in April 2021. Please note uh, work by Enbridge is not associated with this municipal project. Uh, Enbridge will be notifying residents and businesses and provide more information on their work accordingly. During the preliminary design, it was determined that no significant changes would be made to the road function. The proposed cross section, including the number of lanes, and lane widths will match existing, while the horizontal alignment of the road will generally remain unchanged. Street parking will remain on both sides of the road with line painting proposed to improve parking delineation. Sidewalks will also remain on both sides of the road. Here we illustrate the proposed cross section. We have 3.75 meter wide lanes with 2.75 meter wide parking on both sides. You'll also note that we've proposed a 1.8 meter wide curb face sidewalk on the east side to eliminate conflicts with existing utility poles. 
Now at the onset of this project, the municipality advised they would like to improve pedestrian access and provide safe opportunities for residents to cross Syke Street. Based on our evaluation, improvements to the existing pedestrian crossing at Parker Street are proposed. A pedestrian crossover complete with push, button, push buttons and flashing amber beacons will provide uh, safe crossing for pedestrians and the opportunity to stop traffic and cross in a safe manner. The enhanced crossing will also serve as a traffic calming measure, which should encourage traffic to slow down as they enter the downtown core. Now earlier we spoke about how the aged infrastructure allows groundwater infiltration into the sanitary sewers, which reduces capacity. This is also an issue when some pumps, roof drains, and private catch basins are connected to the sanitary sewer. When rainwater and groundwater and unnecessarily enter the storm sewer, it reduces the capacity within the pipe and at the water wastewater treatment plant. There's also a, co a cost associated with treating this clean water. So in an effort to reduce the amount of infiltration and inflow within the sanitary sewer, the municipality is proposing storm sewers within the limits of this project. These storm sewers allow property owners to disconnect sumps, roof drains, foundation drains, et cetera, that may be connected to their sanitary service. And although Meaford hasn't yet developed a bylaw, many municipalities are implementing downspout and sump pump disconnection bylaws requiring proper property owners to eliminate these cross connections. What are the benefits of this project? We've listed some here. Uh, the first one is to increase the long-term capacity of the sewage treatment plant by reducing the amount of groundwater leakage into the system. We'll also uh, uh, reduce sewage seepage or exfiltration, provide a more reliable sanitary water and wastewater network with improved operations. New storm sewers provide a proper outlet for storm water to eliminate the cross connections. The project will provide a new road with improved drainage, improved pedestrian access and public safety, and will reduce overall maintenance costs. Construction impacts. Now Sykes Street North is the primary north-south tra transportation corridor in Meaford and an integral component of the overall transportation system, which services local commuter and tourist traffic in the area. Accordingly, the way both pedestrian and vehicular traffic along Site Street is managed during construction is critical. Below, we have presented two options along with the benefits and challenges of each. Please note a decision on the preferred solution has not yet been made and we do seek public input on this matter. So the first option uh, that we've come up with is to close Sykes Streets uh, and detour uh, through traffic around. Now Sykes Street would remain open for emergency vehicles and local traffic. The benefit uh, of this uh, uh, arrangement uh, will be significant project cost savings in the order of uh, 30%, uh, significant reduction in the construction duration, uh, which we estimate to be in around the 40% range, increased safety throughout the project area by reducing potential conflicts with construction vehicles, and will have the ability to maintain pedestrian access at all times. Now the challenges associated with this option are uh, the increased impact of businesses within the limits of construction as that through traffic won't be uh, traveling uh, traveling along Sykes on a daily basis um, and there will be increased traffic along the detour routes uh, and side streets within town. The second option we looked at was to maintain two lanes of traffic along Sykes Street throughout construction. The benefit of this would be to reduce the impacts to those businesses uh, within the limits of construction. Uh, and uh, the challenges are obviously the, in, the increased cost and duration. Um, under this configuration, pedestrian access may be interrupted at times. There's an increased risk of complication in um, completing the construction uh, in that manner and a potential reduction in the quality of work. Now we wanted to note that um, regardless 
Uh, property access will be maintained under both um, alternatives. Uh, and the contractor will be required to work with property owners to meet special requests and scheduled deliveries, et cetera. Here we have illustrated some potential detour options. Uh, Sykes Street would be closed, open to local traffic only. Traffic would be rerouted to the adjacent streets according to the approved detour plan. Access to business and properties would remain throughout construction and we would implement some uh, separate signage to help ensure that, um, that the public realizes that the access to those businesses is still maintained. Option two, uh, to maintain two lanes of traffic at all times, construction would be staged to facilitate work on one half of the road. Um, once that side is complete, the traffic would be rerouted onto the new road while the contractor complete work on the other half. The contractor would use temporary concrete barriers and traffic cones to delineate traffic throughout the construction zone. Um, Short-term lane closure may also be required to install services and crossings. Next, we have a side uh, slide on the general impacts of construction. All landscape features within the road allowance will be removed and replaced as part of this project. Vibration and noise are expected, are to be expected. The contractor will be required to work within the municipal noise bylaw, which limits construction between 7 a.m. and 7 or 8 p.m. Monday to Friday, and from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturdays. Dust from site roads will be controlled to the extent possible, but some dust from gravel placement and compaction effort is inevitable. Service interruptions to water, sanitary, utilities, et cetera, are expected to be minimal, and residents and business owners will be notified of all scheduled interruptions. Garbage collection will continue like normal. However, the contractor will collect all bins uh, within the limits and relocate them to an appropriate collection location uh, for pickup. Contractor will be responsible for returning them once garbage is collected. Driveway access will be maintained throughout construction with minor interruptions during pipe installation and concrete works, curb and sidewalk. The contractor will provide notice and alternative parking locations where driveway access is interrupted. Finally, we have the proposed schedule. So as listed here, we're looking to, uh, we're seeking um, public input now uh, with the intent of completing the design by the end of January. The municipality would like to tender the project in February. We're hoping to get all approvals in place by March. The council award is expected to happen in March, uh, which will allow construction to start in May with completion by late October 2021. We've also Enbridge gas relocation is scheduled to start April 2021. And all work on this project will include a two year warranty period. And with that, that is the conclusion of our presentation today. Um, as noted here, we've included some contact information if anybody has any, uh, any further questions or comments that they have. Uh, as noted, we'll be accepting those until January 22nd. I will unshare. OK. So with that, we will uh, scroll back to the start and go through any comments that have been posted. OK. OK, first question. Do you know how much it will reduce the amount of clean water going to the sewage treatment plant? It's from Paul Vickers. Paul, thank you for the question. Um, we don't have an exact amount on that yet. Um, the development of a bylaw to help eliminate the cross contamination of rainwater and groundwater from the sanitary sewer is still a work in progress. Um, it, it, it still needs to be um, discussed internally and approved by council. 
um, it, it, it will ultimately um, result in the um, the amount of um, effort by the by the public to provide to eliminate those cross contaminations. Um, however, I, I can tell you that from uh, our experience with other municipalities, you know, it 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 definitely can be significant and uh, you know provide some some real savings in in not only the capacity of the pipe, the sewage treatment plant, uh, but but also in in savings for the municipality. Hope that answers your questions. Thank you for it. And that looks to be the only question that has been posted. Um, at this point, if there are, if there's anybody else has any comments or questions that they'd like to make, feel free to uh, type it in the box. Um, I think at this time we'd like to give the people who are joining us via phone the opportunity to speak. And, uh, bear with me as I try to navigate uh, this situation. Then press star six. Right, so if you are on the phone and would like to speak, uh, if you have any questions or comments, press star six to unmute yourself and let's hear what you have to say. Going once, going twice. Okay, with that, we will assume that nobody has any questions from the phones. Okay, we have a new comment that came in. Oh, we've got a couple. Uh, so from Scott, how do business owners express their concerns or opinions? Many in the BIA will be opposed to option one. Well, um, Scott, I mean, the, obviously uh, the, you can take the opportunity this evening to um, uh, ask questions or express your concerns or comments. Um, by, by all means, we are uh, we are open to receiving uh, comments via email uh, or through um, through th through the phone lines. Um, as noted within the presentation, this is a, a decision that hasn't yet been made. There are many uh, pros and cons. Um, there are costs associated with with each option, and um, I believe that the municipality would like to hear from the public and from the BIA. Uh, on those matters prior to making a decision. So um, feel free to send us an email, provide your comments. We'd love to hear from you. Um, another question from Paul Vickers. If the road is completely closed for the construction project, how much time will be saved? So we we reached out to um, uh, some of our contacts in the construction industry and we've, we've reviewed this with them. We estimate that it could um, it could accelerate the project uh, by up to 40% uh, in total duration if we are able to uh, close the road entirely and, and detour traffic around. So um, if we're looking at upwards of six months of construction, we are looking at possibly saving 40% of that. So Scott's asking uh, about who within the municipality. Um, so we had uh, Chris Collier down as the uh, the person at the municipality who would be receiving um, comments um, about this project. So Chris Collier, his email is uh, is uh, available online. It's also included at the end of this presentation, which will be posted on the municipal website. It's also in the notice from the PIC. Right. Sorry, Chris's contact is also available in the notice of the PIC. Will the truck route be set up for larger trucks? That's a good comment. Um, yes, we would have to uh, consider the manner in which large trucks would be would be routed around, and that would be uh, um, included as a requirement for for a detour plan. I just this is Chris Collier, Alan. I just want to make sure that everyone's clear that a full road closure will still allow local traffic to pass through the construction zone. Uh, yep. It's not exactly what it, it's stated to be, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So people who who uh, uh, live within the limits of construction or or um, uh, need to access a business within the limits of construction, 
access will be maintained to allow um, those residents or those people wishing to uh, go to local businesses, uh, they will still be able to have access. There'll be signage up to um, uh, advise the public of, of the best way to uh, to gain access, uh, not, not only to, to the residents, but also uh, to the businesses um, in those areas. And then obviously we will um, be maintaining access for emergency vehicles throughout. With that, are there any other questions, concerns, comments? Yes, I see Ross raising his hand. Ross, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. I couldn't find, can you hear me all right? I can. I, I couldn't find the box to ask a question. So I guess my, my question is uh, a 40% uh, reduction in the timeline does that mean that it might be possible to uh, to finish the project by the end of August? If it started in May? That sounds yeah. like about 40% to me. Yep. Yep, I think your math's correct there. I think by the end of August would be um, somewhere, you know, end of August would be, would be more feasible. And I, I think the message is that to, to construct um, to stage the project, to to route traffic down one side and build build one side at a time, uh, comes with a premium in terms of cost and time, um, and both of those can be reduced by proceeding with the option with the option of closing the road, making it open to to local traffic only. And can I just ask another question quickly? Yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting to know how many businesses there are in those two blocks, but I believe that there is the Ontario Service Centre would be one of them, uh, a computer uh, store and service, and I believe at least two restaurants, and I guess the Circle K as well. Circle K as well, yep, yep, there's, um, yeah, so that, I mean, that covers uh, some there, I believe there are a few others. Um, luckily, some of the access can be provided off at the side streets in terms of the Circle K and the um, the the um, Ontario. the service Ontario building. Um, so those uh, you know we have a clear paths to provide access to those buildings. Um, yeah, it's um, it's it's something that needs to be evaluated and, and come up with you know the best solution for it for for the community. So thank you. Thank you for your question. Another one here from Brian Wood. Uh, given COVID restrictions and their impact on businesses, why not delay the project one year? Uh, this could impact outdoor patios, et cetera. Um, I, I mean, I think that's a fair question. Uh, the, sorry, the, the primary reason that we need to construct it this year is the municipality obtained funding from the government uh, for uh, up to 90% of the uh, the road costs. And one of the conditions of that is for all construction to be complete by the end of 2021. I suspect that would be the, the primary reason um, that this project needs to proceed this year. Chris, I don't know if you have any other thoughts. No, or I was gonna say, Alan, that's the main reason that we have obtained funding and there are some deadlines that we have to meet to get in order to capture all that funding. So that is why we're plugging away with it in 2021. Uh, just on that note, there was one question above that one that wasn't answered. Oh. From Scott, it looks like. Thank you, Chris. Uh, what is the expected cost of the project? We spoke of percent savings costings, but what, uh, to what scale? So um, the current uh, overall project budget for this, uh, for the Sykes Street project is uh, 2.4 million. Um, and I believe that is calculated based on the assumption that uh, we would proceed with option two, which would be the more expensive option. Are there any other? Okay, thanks, good. Um, are there any other questions or comments? 
out there. If you're uh, struggling to find the comment box, uh, if you uh, if you do turn on your your camera, and put up your hand. That way, Ross was successful in, in getting my attention that way. That was that was good. Okay, with nothing else coming in, um, I think we'll wrap this up. Uh, as indicated, um, feel free to submit comments up to the 22nd. Um, we would love to hear back from you. And uh, yeah, if, if anything comes comes to mind after this, or if you're able to rewatch it, or if you have any other thoughts, please forward those through. We'd love to hear from you, and uh, we will do our best to try to incorporate those comments, concerns, questions into the final design, into the tender package um, as best we can. Thank you, everybody, and, oh, and have a good evening.